we're talking about this evening is the emergency use authorization that Zydus Cadla has received for its COVID-19 vaccine called Zycov D. This is the sixth vaccine candidate that has got the green signal from uh, the Indian health authorities. And the important and uh, distinguishing thing about this particular vaccine is not only that is um, you know a DNA based vaccine which is the first um, in India and the world but also this vaccine has gotten approval on the basis of the trials it conducted for the ages of 12 and above so so far India has not been vaccinating 18 plus but with the Zykov D they will be allowed to vaccinate those who are 12 and above so adolescents for the first time could receive the vaccine effectively through the emergency use approval that Zykov D has got. So let's talk a bit more about it. Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta, National AFE Committee member, is joining us on the show. I'm also speaking this evening to Dr. Vineet Samdani, pediatrician at the Bridge Candy Hospital. Welcome to both of you and thank you so much for speaking with us on the India Development Debate. Uh, Dr. Das Gupta, I want to start by understanding how different the Zykov D will be from the other vaccines that are available right now? Thank you. Um, the, emergency, the emergency authorization of this vaccine has been in the pipeline for some time, and it was indeed expected in the second half of August. So this is what is known as a plasmid DNA vaccine. Uh, it uses a genetically engineered non-replicating version of a type of a DNA molecule, which is called a plasmid. Uh, so essentially, these plasmids are coded in a way uh, that, that it manufactures spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the causative agent of uh, COVID-19. And that really uh, stimulates the immune response in the body. Uh, the important thing is that it's a three-dose vaccine, four weeks apart. And as you said in the earlier presentation, this does not require an injection uh, as we know it, but it will be delivered through a different device, different kind of device. It's an intradermal vaccine. India has very good experience of intradermal uh, injections with the injectable polio vaccine and uh, earlier the, the rabies vaccine. So our vaccinators are trained for intradermal vaccine and this should be able to roll out uh, without too many problems. All right, um, just a quick word from Dr. Vineet Samdani. A lot of people watching this who are parents of uh, children or you know who have children in their family 12 years and above will be wondering whether they should go ahead now and vaccinate their kids uh, once Zykov D is available. Um, is there any um, concerns over here at all? Is there enough evidence that shows that it's perfectly safe and advisable to go ahead and vaccinate 12 and above? Uh, thanks, Samana, for having me on the show. But yes, I think the studies have shown they've had a trial of 26,000 odd kids and the efficacy is around 66.6%. And also, they came to say that the side effects are much lesser than the conventionally used uh, vaccines for about 18 years. So I think with their study and with the number of subjects that they've studied, it should be considered and we must use it on kids between 12 and 18 because these are a major sect of our population which are unvaccinated and eventually going to be entering into schools and colleges and are also socially mixing a lot. So we must take it with this understanding that, yes, trials are done and it's 66% safe and we must use it. Yeah, uh, Dr. Das Gupta, I just uh, want to get a sense of what the rollout is likely to be. Um, because uh, we've had six candidates uh, who have been allowed, but effectively if you go to see COVID shield is still the most dominant vaccine uh, it also had a head start uh, apart from the others but in terms of quantity it is pretty much COVID shield and then uh, maybe in some places you get covaxin and sputnik etc so do you think that could be the similar situation with zykov d at least initially and will it be a bit of a hassle considering this vaccine needs three doses not two well, um, introducing any new vaccine 
does uh, entail some recalibration, some re-engineering of the program. And uh, I'm sure we will be able to do that uh, reasonably well. Uh, yes, three doses is going to be a challenge. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, for example, uh, some of the optimism was initially around the single dose vaccines. But as you said very rightly, Covishield continues to remain the workhorse. Uh, as of date, uh, anything between 85 to 90 percent of the vaccination is still being uh, done by the, the, the Covishield or the AstraZeneca vaccine in India. And therefore, the diversification, despite uh, the, the authorization of six vaccines now, hasn't really been remarkable, and I'm sure we will need to make that transition. On the other hand, the government has assured uh, through the Rajya Sabha that adequate procurement orders are being placed. And in specific, Zycovid uh, uh, stockpiling is also beginning. But yes, the rollout is going to take some time. It's not certainly not going to happen overnight. And the other thing to remember is, uh, according to the, to the uh, government's position so far, uh, overall, there are about uh, 30 lakh children uh, who will need to be prioritized because they have other comorbidities. And then it will finally, I mean, uh, the, the childhood vaccination, yes. including adolescents, will finally uh, expand to cover the entire 40 crore or 400 million uh, child population. But uh, though this optimism is linked to reopening of schools uh, and, and other uh, child-related institutions, but yeah. this is not really a mandatory requirement. No, so let me just understand this clearly, Dr. Das Gupta. You're saying that Zykov D, because that's the only vaccine which was approved right now for 12 plus, uh, is likely to be given to children who also have other comorbidities or uh, maybe a suppressed um, immune systems. And we should not link the vaccination to opening up of schools. Have I got that correct? That's correct. So, so, so um, the, the government's uh, plan so far is certainly to prioritize those children who have comorbidities and therefore have greater need. But uh, reopening of institutions is not being linked. Many mm -hmm. states have come up with with reopening plans of, of various classes, the higher classes uh, plus two, or some have uh, even even gone to class eight, nine, ten, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, what's what's really uh, important is that all the teaching and non-teaching staff of the school or any educational institution, for that matter, whether it be college or universities, as they as they should be on the way to opening up, they are they are prioritized. Uh, more than the younger people, the students who are going to join. But for schools, this is certainly not a mandatory requirement. Um, Dr. Samdani, uh, you know, I also want to ask you, do we need to wait for vaccinations to open up schools? This is a concern a lot of parents have. They say, let our kids get the vaccine and then we'll send them to school. So do you think that the two need to be linked and a second question i was speaking with dr mulial uh, a couple of days ago and he mentioned that the uk is not even planning to vaccinate kids 12 under what are your thoughts on that do we need to prioritize 12 under as well or keep it to 12 plus at this point so i think at this point india a lot of states have opened schools in spite of them not getting vaccinated number one so opening of schools is a government decision, what they are going to do and what they would do. But two things. Once, if we start vaccination by September also, the exact immunity to kick in would at least take another six to eight weeks minimum. So therefore, for which we are not going to wait a state already started opening schools. But well, this 12 to 18 age group must be vaccinated and should be on a priority for vaccinations. And the second question is, what is your second question, Tamana? Uh, my second question was, do we really need to vaccinate kids under 12? So nowhere in the world we've started vaccinating under 12, but all there are trials going on for under 12, and I believe Coaxin is under uh, phase three of trials. 
for two to 12 years. We would have to wait for their data release to understand what is the safety, what are the side effects, and mm. how many doses are going to be required. And secondly, there is some additional study going on regarding the Zydus vaccine for two-dose efficacy in children between 12 to 18 years also. Yes. Yes, so exciting times, but uh, the breaking news, the headline really at this point is that 12 plus uh, can effectively get vaccinated in India with Zykov D. It's an intradermal vaccine. Um, it's a DNA based vaccine and it has three doses. It has received emergency use authorization this evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Das Gupta and Dr. Samdani, for joining us on the show uh, to explain uh, this very important development. Uh,